Hello, so today I thought we'd create a couple of tags. Uh, these are MDF tags from Samantha K. They're a nice big size, as you can see they are about just short of six inches by three and a half inches. Uh, they're nice and sturdy, so they will take quite a lot of wet mediums. Um, so I've got two of those. I've also got some tea bags. Now these are the tea bags that I've used for creating my tea stained papers. So they're just cheap, ordinary, basic tea bags. Not the really nice tea bags with come with a little string and the tag. They're just everyday tea bags. Um, I've used them for tea staining as I say but then I have while the oven was still on and I was drying my tea stained papers but I'd finished taking those out of the oven uh, I laid a piece of baking parchment onto a couple of my trays I laid the tea bags out flat and I dried them in the oven on a very very low heat um, so that they didn't burn but they do get little scorch marks some places which is quite interesting uh, and they retain the colour of the tea uh, and quite strongly so they are completely dry I've had these dry now for about probably six months in a bag so I know they're not going to deteriorate I know they're not going to go mouldy because they've been dried in the oven so it's not quite the same as sterilising but it's killed any bugs or anything once I dried them, I just left them on the um, baking tray with the baking parchment on till they'd cooled down and then I popped them in a bag and put them aside till I need them. We'll use those for adding texture and layers to our tags, but on the top of the tags I'm going to use some of these chipboards which are from Scrapping Yitz, this company, which is a Polish company. Um, I've I bought quite a lot of chipboards from them um, before the pandemic hit, so I'll be using them in quite a few projects. Um, there's this one which has got two separate strips of cogs, and then this one which has wings with cogs and chains and a separate wing there and a double one there. This one here actually fits on top of that one to give dimension but you could use it separately if you wanted. I've also got some Tim Holtz collage paper which is quite sturdy but it goes translucent when you apply it with decoupage glue so that gives another layer as you can see on here you can see the music paper but also the design on the collage paper I'm going to cover my tags with some music paper because that will give a nice base and then I'll work on the tags but we'll start by taking the tea bags apart and then we'll go from there so I'll set everything else aside just for a little bit and we'll concentrate on our tea bags. We've got some other bits and pieces there. I've got two containers. One is a little jam jar, miniature jam jar, uh, which I'm going to create some texture paste uh, with the tea bags and we'll store it in here. I've also got another little container because as I open the tea bags I'm going to pop the tea leaves into this little container and it's just handy to have a lid on so it doesn't go everywhere. I'm not precious about how I open the tea bags. I just basically start at one edge and pull one layer away from the other. I'm doing this over the top of my little container so that the tea bags can go in there. There we are. 
So those are the, not the tea bags, the tea leaves. And then I'll just continue round separating the two layers of tea bag away from each other. I don't mind that it's got little rips here and there, that's absolutely fine. It just adds more texture. And then I can either leave that edge with them two joined together or I can separate them. This edge here is actually a quite nice extra bit of texture but if you don't want lines then rip that bit off. So that's two. If you're a bit worried about separating the tea bags just by ripping them you can very carefully use a knife and just get it between the two layers and then just go along the edges. You get a little bit neater edge. Just tip the tea bags out. See that is a different tea to the first one. So that's a different colour. So I'll just mix them together. So as I say if you do all of the tea bags like this, I tend to prefer to rip them as you can see rather than using a knife plus the fact I aren't likely to stab myself. So I'll go ahead and do all that and then we'll come back and mix the texture paste. Alright, so we've got all our tea bags separated out into the different layers. We've got our little container with the dried tea leaves in. I've got some PVA glue, which is, this is just out of one of my glue pots. And then I've got various cheap craft paints. These are very cheap, not artist grade at all, just cheap art, sort of paint. You can see, because they're burnt umber, burnt sienna, all, both burnt umber and burnt sienna, and there's quite a difference in the colours. So I'm just going to mix. I'm going to use this one because I quite like it. It's a rusty colour. And I'm going to do it in this um, jam jar lid so you can see how much I'm putting. I would normally do it in the little container but because it's less messy but so you can see about how much I'm putting if I can get this out. I'm going to mix it in here. So I've got the equal amount of paint and PVA and then I want about five times as much, four to five times as much of the dried tea leaves. It isn't an exact science, it'll depend on your paint, it'll depend on your glue, it'll depend on your tea leaves. Um, but basically you want a spreading consistency. Not too dry, but also not too sloppy. It needs to, when it's mixed, be able to be spread through a stencil or added to projects, but have enough stickiness so it'll still hold together and won't separate. So I'm nearly there. I think I need a little bit more paint and a little bit more glue. I'll go for a bit darker colour this time. Don't know if this nozzle actually works. No, it doesn't. It needs a pin through it. It's quite a lot of glue. I can always add more tea leaves. Because the glue is acrylic but also the paint is, they mix absolutely fine. 
This is better, this is more spreadable. It's also a bit darker because I've got the darker burnt umber in it. This is great for achieving a sort of rusty look. Because um, when it dries, the PVA is obviously clear and the, the paint gives it a colour. So there we are. So you can see I'm mixing it with a, just a lolly stick and you can see that it holds its shape but it is still sticky enough to stick to the substrate or whatever you're putting it on. It does store but not for very long. I wouldn't recommend storing it for more than a couple of weeks. I did have one jar that I stored a little bit longer than that but one that I'd stored for about six months actually did go slightly mouldy because of the organic uh, sort of qualities of the tea leaves. Um, once I've put it on projects, I've had projects that I've, I've put it onto for probably two, three years ago and they're still absolutely fine because once it dries out the plastic of the acrylic glue and paint, cut, I've coated the tea bags and that's, it's fine. It, it isn't a problem once it's on a, a project. So that is our texture paste, which is actually quite textural as well. It'll create texture when it goes through a stencil or whatever, but even just applying it as it is, it will create texture. It is a lot better to mix in the jar because it's a lot less messy and you don't have this stage of having to scrape it out the mixing place but it's it's done. So just for the moment I'm going to seal that up. I'll keep my lolly stick uh, and use it again. I'll just give it a wipe off with some kitchen roll. And I'll put my jam jar lid straight into the wash so that I can use it again. So we'll move on to our tea bags now. Put our texture paste over there. So we've got our tea bags which have been separated into separate layers. Just get rid of this paint out of the way. I've got two, the two tags, I've covered them one side with music paper, the other side this is a copy of a um, tea stained paper. I've done some tea staining and I got this lovely effect as you can see on the paper. So I've, I've photocopied that. It is an inkjet copy, so it, if I get water onto it, it might run. I've just used decoupage glue uh, by DecoArt to attach the papers to both sides. This is the side I'm going to be working on, and that will be the back of the tag. But I wanted to cover it first because once I get the dimensional elements on, it'll be more difficult to cover the back. So to remember the co to cover the back of your tag if you want it decorative. Once I'd glued my papers on, I roughly cut round. I then used my sanding block just to sand off any excess bits. You can use an emery board or a sanding block and it's quite handy to get in these little bits here and as you just go around sanding it, the paper will, excess paper will come off. I get rid of all the, the dust. I've actually got some hole reinforcers here as well, which I'm going to pop on. I've just stained these 
with Vintage Photo on a sponge. I'm a bit darker. And I'm going to pop those onto both tags. It's much easier to stain them while they're on the backing sheet. Um, and then you can can't just do them very swiftly. All right, I'll set one aside, and I've got my decoupage glue again. You can use watered down PVA. You can use decoupage glue. I tended to always use watered down PVA, um, but it doesn't matter whatever you fancy. I like the sort of sealed edges of the tea bags to be on because I think it adds more texture um, but if you don't want those on as I say just get rid of them so I'm just going to add a reasonable amount of decoupage glue pop my tea bag on and and go over the top so it's sealed. I am going to intentionally leave a few little bits that aren't flat because I want a textured look and also I'm going to rip some of these so that they aren't completely squares and do it a bit like a patchwork so that it's in random areas and not completely just square. So I'll probably go over that bit there and I'll overlap. And the variation on how they've baked, how they've cooked and sealed and dried will give you different effects. I'll rip that one in half and I'll go up here. And you can do as little or as much of this as you want. You don't have to cover the entire tag. But you can if you want. And then sometimes I'll have these little bits which are the edges. And I might just pop those in the middle. Oh, this is quite an interesting piece. So I'll probably... Try and separate that a bit more, so it's just one layer. And I may go up there. In hindsight, I should have put my re reinforcer on later, but I can always add another one. So I'll go up there. across there and where you have little gaps like I'm going to have a gap there I can add another layer later but you see how I'm keeping the edges and overlapping a little bit like not a patchwork because you don't overlap so much but I'm just sort of popping it in yeah I'm going to put that bit on there this is a, the other edgy bit. You see how you get these nice raised and textured bits. Once you've done one tag, you can then use your spare little bits on the second tag. Your leftover bits. If 
your edges aren't completely stuck you can always go back over them another little bit on there and then I think we're done as you can see I've completely covered my whole reinforcer but I'll sort that out later The odd little bit that isn't covered but I'm probably going to ink the edges so that doesn't matter. So I'm going to do the other tag the same but what I might do with the other tag is to put a little bit of the collage paper, the Tim Holtz collage paper on first. Maybe this is a little bit and then see if we can see both layers through. I don't think we'll be able to. So actually I don't think I will. No, because that's just going to waste it. So I'll just cover the other one with the tea bags and set them aside to dry completely and then we'll do the next. All right, so we've got our tags covered with the tea bags. This is the one where I've left the edges of the tea bags on which gives a little bit more texture this is the one where I've removed all the edges there's no um, stripy edges to the tea bags I, I removed those before I stuck them on this one I've sanded this one I haven't all I do is get my sanding block and just go around the edges and it just removes any excess paper or tea bag because the tags are shaped I just need to go into these little bits here just gently and get rid of the excess tea bag as I say So you can see I've covered my hole reinforcer up but it does still show but there's no hole in the middle because it's got paper over it so I just pop a pencil into the hole and swizzle it round and that opens the hole up again. I could get a craft knife in there just to um, remove the excess paper but usually by the time you've got your string and everything through it's fine I've actually caught the the back so what I'll do is I'll put another one on the back we've got this far I think this one I'm going to add some of the collage paper over the top just in areas not everywhere just a little bit now and again I think possibly something with script like that. This one I'm going to treat with gesso, which is my favourite thing to do with this type of thing. I've got a fairly stiff brush. These are actually my glue brushes. They're very, very cheap. They're quite stiff bristles. Um, I get them in packs of three to a cheap local store, it's not a craft store, it's just a, a general store and I'm going to put a little tiny bit of gesso onto my glass mat oh, well if I can get it out I need the, the smallest amount I can possibly get which that is probably already too much Pick a little bit up with my brush 
and either work it off on my craft mat or on a bit of kitchen roll or toilet tissue. So you're sort of working it off. Got it on your brush but you're getting majority off. And then very lightly, very lightly, I just flick across. You can do this in stages. So this is why you basically want hardly any gesso on your brush because you're going to just pick up the texture. I hope you can see that. So all these little edges and raised bits just get a little bit of highlighting on them. And all the nice creases and everything that's that are in the tea bag, they get highlighted. That's why I always say I don't mind if there's a little bit just that isn't stuck or that bubbles a little bit, because it gives you more interest. So I hope you can see where it's picked up all this texture. don't think I'm going to do that with this one so then we can see the difference. So I set that one aside to dry for a little bit and this collage paper I'm just going to rip. You could do this by putting a wet brush onto your collage paper just to get it to dissolve a little bit so you can separate it. What I want is that there. I'll show you the wet brush method just in case you're interested. So I just dip my brush into a little bit of water and then where I want it to rip I just go along. And you get a more uneven edge which is what you want. You don't ever want to cut these papers because the feathered edge blends a lot easier than the straight edge. So if you can see I'm just tearing it along where it's wet. Need a bit more water on my brush. the bit I need I think. I don't think I want that bit. It's a bit too high. So as you can see it comes off a lot easier with a bit of water. Yeah, I think that will just add a bit of interest there. And I might put this bit there. So again I'm going to use my decoupage glue because it's great for this job. Put this little bit on first. And because it's almost like a type of tissue paper this will blend in, as you can see, to the background once you get the decoupage blue glue on it. And the underneath layers will show through. So I need to go across there and down here. So 
just tear that little bit off the bottom and I might as well add it up here save wasting it and then again once this is all dried then I may add a little bit of ink to the top and ink to the edges just going through with a bit more glue to make sure it is completely adhered. Right, so I'll dry those two and we'll go to the next stage. <laughs> 